Today we're going to be talking about uh, PyTechPlot, our new Python API, which controls the capabilities of TechPlot 360. And this is uh, all of your questions. When each of you had a chance to register for this webinar, you were uh, given a chance to ask questions, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. The presenters uh, are John Getz, a PhD. He's a software engineer. He's been with TechPlot for about two years now and uh, is the lead developer of PyTechPlot. Uh, he received his PhD in high energy particle physics from UCLA, uh, followed by a postdoc at Ohio University. He's been really uh, instrumental in the design and implementation of PyTechPlot, and we're uh, very happy to have him on board today. We also have uh, myself, Scott Fowler. I'm the product manager of TechPlot 360, and uh, by extension, PyTechPlot as well. Uh, I've been product manager for about two years here at TechPlot, but I've been with TechPlot since uh, 1999, most of that time spent as a software developer. So uh, at this point, I'll hand it over to, uh, to John. Uh, can you give us an overview of what PyTechPlot is? Yeah, hi. So this is uh, rather uh, as an object-oriented interface to the TechPlot, the capabilities of TechPlot 360. It's a Python module. You can install it using uh, Python standard pip application to install packages. The documentation is uh, shipped along with 360 and is also online on TechPlot.com, as you can see on the right there. And it does require a TechPlot support service uh, license. So let's, uh, let's move on to our, uh, our first question. Uh, again, all of these came uh, directly from you. So first question from one of our users is, what can PyTechPlot do? Well, PyTechPlot really can do anything that the TechPlot 360 engine can do. It can access data directly. It can create images, movies. It can interface with other Python modules because it is just a Python module itself. And I will say something about the um, I guess I mentioned it before, the uh, TechPlot engine is really the underlying core of uh, the TechPlot 360. So it has all of the uh, rendering, all of the data loading, and all of the uh, CFD analysis uh, uh, application you know, um, processes within it. And can all be controlled from Python using the PyTechPlot API. Yeah, so if you're uh, familiar with the TechPlot macro language uh, or uh, TechPlot ADK, uh, those both uh, effectively use the TechPlot engine, which is the same engine used by TechPlot 360, the user interface. Uh, so uh, anything, like John said, anything that 360 can do, uh, you can do with, uh, with PyTechPlot, uh, and more because you have access to those, uh, to the other Python modules that you can integrate quite nicely. Right, right. Okay, uh, next question is, how easy is it to write PyTechPlot scripts? Well, it's, it's very easy. Uh, although uh, knowledge of TechPlot 360 terminology does help, and I, we have an example here at the bottom, where really it's just import TechPlot. This is our Python script, so we just import the TechPlot module. And we can import other Python modules and use them. For example, we can load a layout with TechPlot.loadLayout. We give it some input file. We can save an image with techplot.export.save JPEG, for example. And all of the image saving functions are under this techplot.export namespace. And we'll get into that, I think, a little, little bit. And, and also I'll say that um, uh, the um, uh, support group here for PyTechplot is uh, very useful. And so just emailing support at techplot.com can be a great resource. Yeah, we're, uh, we're definitely eager to hear from you if you have questions on, on PyTechPlot. Uh, this is a, a new API for us, and we're continuing to uh, develop it and add capabilities. So uh, if you uh, ever find yourself getting stuck, uh, please do uh, contact us. <clears throat> so next question, how can I post-process Fluent results with PyTechPlot? Well, we do have a uh, function to load Fluent files. It's just under the data namespace called load fluent. And if you click on this link, actually, we can show the, um, what the documentation look like, looks like for this function. And it has a lot of uh, capabilities in it, a lot of uh, 
know, different arguments that we can use to determine how the data is loaded or interpreted, actually, from the Fluent files. We can give it a list of case file names, data file names. We can say which frame that the resulting data set is going to be attached to. We can tell whether to append the data or to overwrite. We can reset the style of the frame that's going to be attached to this data set. And a lot of other options, uh, as you can see. And uh, it, this, of course, is not our only uh, you know, loader. We have many others. Uh, and in the Python API, we have uh, wrapped several of these, including Plot3D and CGNS, as well as, well as our uh, TechPlot native formats, the PLT, the TechPlot ASCII, and the Sizzle formats. But then we have a whole bunch of other formats that are supported by TechPlot 360 that we don't necessarily have a nice Python interface to yet, but we can always fall back to the macro language. And we can call macro functions from PyTechPlot and use that to load any of these other data formats that TechPlot 360 can load. All right, uh, next question. Uh, what does PyTechPlot offer that's not already in other Python modules like Pandas and Matplotlib? Well, PyTechPlot does offer the domain-specific expertise that TechPlot 360 has. So this includes all of the data loaders that we just discussed before, as well as uh, 2D and 3D plotting with slices, isosurfaces, stream traces, and you know, vector and scatter plots as well. Uh, and also, uh, you, don't, you have um, access to all of the CFD post-processing capabilities that TechBot360 offers. So under the, um, you know, the CFD uh, analyze, the, uh, kind of the, under the menu for um, kind of analysis, there's a lot of uh, capability there. That is all available in PyTechPlot. Yeah, so uh, I guess to summarize that, John, is, uh, you know, Packages like Pandas and Matplotlib, they have a lot of great capabilities, but what we really offer here is if you're already using Python and comfortable with Python, uh, we now have an API that gives you uh, some domain-specific capabilities, uh, specific to CFD, uh, the, the data loaders, uh, the ability to load CGNS and, and Plot3D, and uh, do some of the uh, uh, sophisticated plotting uh, such as slices and isosurfaces that uh, may not be available in those packages. Right, right. Okay, uh, next question. Can I use PyTechPlot with any Python interpreter? Well, uh, I'll say yes and no. So uh, PyTechPlot is a Python module. It can be used with your system installed version of Python. We do not ship uh, Python along with TechPlot 360. You use your own. But there are some requirements. It has to be a 64-bit version of Python. It has to be Python either version 2.7 or 3.4 or later. And of course, we also need TechLaw 360 version 2017 R1 or later. And uh, on the Python version, I, I will note that uh, we are going to try our best to keep up with uh, changes in, in Python. So. Uh, once, uh, right now, the newest version of uh, Python is 3.6, and it's our goal to offer official support for uh, 3.6 and uh, 3.5, 3.4. Uh, and uh, so when 3.7 comes out, we will officially support uh, the newest version and two prior. So that would be 3.5, 3.6, and 3.7. Uh, PyTechPlot will likely continue to work on 3.4, but uh, we we will uh, very likely drop official support for older versions of, of Python at that point. Uh, on the requirements also, I'll point out that uh, we do require a 64-bit version of Python. Uh, for those of you that are running on Windows, I know that the default download on the Python website is the 32-bit version. So you have to dig a little bit to find the 64-bit. Uh, the reason uh, that we require 64-bit is uh, because the TechPlot engine that John talked about earlier is compiled as a 64-bit uh, application, and for us to be compatible uh, with, with Python and the TechPlot engine, uh, that's just a requirement that's forced on us. And also, I, I guess I'll add, uh, we will support Python 2.7 for forever. That's uh, Because there was a big change from Python 2 to 3, uh, you may be stuck with Python version 
2.7, and so that's what we will support. So it'll be always 2.7 and the latest three versions of Python 3. Yeah. Okay, next question. How do I generate images and movies with PyTechPlot? Okay, well, we've already seen an example of creating an image. We just show that up at the top here where we use the save JPEG function. It's under the export namespace. And uh, while we do have a fairly uh, complete style, uh, you know, um, setting for, you know, the API is uh, very complete on the style side. It's, uh, it does have some uh, holes in it, and one of them is uh, movie creation. And so we can resort to using a macro language to create uh, movies. And so here we show an example of uh, exporting an AVI file. We use this export setup function, macro function, and then the animate time. So we're animating through time slices uh, to uh, something called movie.avi. And that's just the single kind of command to create an AVI. Down at the bottom half of the screen, we show how to use, uh, how to actually change the plot a frame at a time. So here we're setting up an AVI uh, file that we're going to export. We say export start, and then we go ahead and we make some modification to the frame and export the frame. So now we're exporting each individual frame into the movie, and we call export finish, and we have a resulting movie file. Yeah, and, and uh, this is a uh, export start, export next frame, and export finish are really the key uh, capabilities here, and like John said, uh, the, the the Python API it's it's a, a new capability for us. So we haven't created pure Python APIs for everything, uh, and uh, in in that case, uh, you can fall back on the macro language. Uh, and this this technique uh, that we're showing in the bottom half of the frame is fairly commonly used if you uh, have sophisticated animations that you want to create. Hey, now the, uh, another question, how do I export TechPlot binary files? Okay, well, we've already seen how to load data, and we do have uh, functions to save this, uh, our TechPlot native format, so the TechPlot binary, ASCII, and also sizzle files. And we do have support for uh, kind of the remote, the sizzle server uh, as well. And so we can export directly to these data files, and it's just functions like save tech plot binary, save tech plot ASCII and all this. And those are under the data namespace. But we also have capability to save and load uh, layouts. And the layouts can have embedded data or they can be linked to uh, data files. And the data files don't have to be native tech plot files. They can be other, um, you know, uh, you know like plot 3 or CGNS, for example. We also have the capability to save and load style sheets, which are effectively uh, just plot style without an attached data set. Yeah, I, I will say that uh, if you want to export tech plot binary files, say if you're writing your own uh, CFD solver, uh, you may also want to look at our TechIO library. Uh, the TechIO library is, uh, is written for uh, C and Fortran. We have APIs for both of those languages. Uh, we also have an MPI version of the TechIO library if you are writing a parallel code. Uh, so that may be a, a better way to export binary files uh, if you're trying to integrate it into a, a CFD code. Okay, this is the, uh, the final uh, uh, question that uh, came in before the webinar. Uh, how do I use PyTechBot on an HPC? Okay, so on an HPC, um, you will need to install TechPlot 360 so that it's in some common location that can be used on all of the nodes. For example, an NFS mount. Uh, in addition, you'll need, of course, Python, and then you'll need PyTechPlot installed. And if you don't have administrative privilege on the node machines, uh, you can install uh, a Py any Python module into your into the user's home directory, and for we just show the command here to install PyTechPlot into the user uh, user's home directory is dash dash user. Doing this will allow Python to find the TechPlot uh, module. I will also say that on Linux and Mac, you'll need to set 
the LD library path or DYLD library path, and uh, we provide uh, a configuration script along with TechBot 360. It's called Tech 360 ENV, and that can be used to set up this library path um, before invoking the Python interpreter. And uh, we have a lot of documentation on what this does and how to use it uh, along with the Python, in the PyTechBot documentation. Okay, so uh, you know, we have quite a few of you on, online, and now let's open it up for your questions. Uh, we already have a couple that have been typed in, so uh, please use that question panel if you have additional questions that you'd like us to answer. Uh, and we'll get to as many of these as possible. Uh, we have uh, uh, up until uh, 10.30 today, so uh, quite a bit of time that we can uh, stay online and answer questions for you. So uh, first question that I uh, see here is, uh, can PyTestPlot be used for time series analysis as well? Uh, John, you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. So um, the data sets are, uh, ha have a series of zones, and typically zones will have a solution time associated with them. If not, you can always set the solution time using the PyTechBot API. It's actually quite nice. You can get a handle on the zone, and you can set solution time to uh, all of, you know, for all of the zones. And then you can go back to the frame, and you can set the solution time for the frame. And you can effectively loop over the solution times uh, quite easily. We provide all the functionality to, to get the list of solution times. We can set and get the current solution time. And uh, th I mean, that's all there. So it's a quite, quite nice uh, feature of my TechBot, actually. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, I guess short answer is yes, it can be used for uh, time series analysis. Uh, and uh, I, I, I find that uh, PyTechBot is, is really great for being able to query information about your data set, which is just not possible via the macro language. Hey, uh, if I'm running PyTechPlot, will it be as fast in rendering as if I was using the TechPlot GUI? Uh, I'll take that one. I guess the, the answer is, is yes. Uh, it's, it's going to be uh, as fast. Now, uh, typically if you're running PyTechPlot, well, PyTechPlot uh, runs only in batch mode at the moment. So if you're doing simple uh, image generation, uh, PyTechPlot is going to be great for that. Uh, the macro language is pretty good for that as well, uh, which uh, kind of dovetails into the next question uh, from the same person, is why would I want to use PyTechPlot? What's the motivation? Uh, well, if you're doing simple image generation and the macro language is working fine for you, uh, there's really no reason to, uh, to move to PyTechPlot. But if you already have a process where you're using Python, uh, if there are other Python modules that you want to take advantage of to analyze your data, such as uh, SciPy or, uh, or, or NumPy, uh, you can certainly, uh, certainly use those. So uh, it's the additional data analysis and capabilities that you get from Python. Uh, I've seen a number of people write uh, TechPlot macros where they really could have benefited from uh, having uh, data types like arrays or being able to do string processing or query information about your data set, such as uh, getting variable names and zone names. Uh, and that's where PyTechPlot really comes in. Okay. Uh, next question, where is the uh, tech360-env script? Okay, so the, that script is only shipped for Linux and Mac. It's in the bin directory right alongside the tech360 executable. And so you'll see it right there. And what it does is it actually spits out the command that you'll want to evaluate effectively to set the LD library path. It doesn't set the LD, LD library path itself. It really just um, spits out the command. So you basically put the, uh, you know, Tech360, the output of it into backticks and yeah, typically in a, um, something in a, like in a shell script or something. And, and that's available in the uh, TechPlot 360 2017-R2 distribution. I don't believe that was in the R1 distribution. Do you recall, John? I don't recall, but it's probably true. It's R2, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, if you don't see it in your distribution, you may have an earlier distribution of TechPlot 360. <clears throat> okay, uh, what functions have yet to be included in PyTechPlot? Uh, that's kind of a difficult question to answer. Uh, but uh, as we pointed out, animation... Yeah, so, so there's, there are a few things that are um, 
we have to resort to the macro language in order to do it. And one of those is uh, movie creation. Um, another one is if you use blanking. Uh, we haven't quite settled on a you know well-defined API for that yet. Also, frame linking. Uh, beyond that, we have pretty much. Um, no, okay. I, I guess I'll say that um, data, the convenience methods for certain data creation methods. We have all of the low-level data creations. Like if I want to create zones or create variables, and I want to fill in the data, I want to make you know build up the connectivity list. I can do that. But there are higher-level uh, functions to create data sets that are uh, missing so far. Um, but beyond that, we have effectively all of the style uh, settings. Uh, implemented under uh, kind of a plot class. We have, you know, axes and axis, ticks, labels, grids, uh, contours, slices, um, you know, extracting slices and extracting uh, stream traces and all this. Uh, it's all there at the moment. Okay. Uh, can PyTech plot open NSITE files? Uh, one word answer there, yes it can. Uh, hey, uh, Let's see here. Next question. Is there a possibility to access zones using zone names and wildcards now? Uh, with the old scripting language, it was only possible to access them by zone number. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we have some uh, good examples of that in our, uh, in our documentation. Uh, you can access them using uh, uh, full names or uh, wildcards. So you use the, uh, the star uh, method to get a subset of zones that match a, uh, a name. Uh, okay, uh, does PyTech plot uh, leverage GPU or OpenGL to render 2D plots such as line plots? Uh, well, I'll say uh, um, no. So the, the, the short answer is no. The PyTech plot um, at the moment does not have access to the um, rendering canvas that 360 has. Okay, so all of the capability, you know, for, it, you know, it's really image and movie generation in batch mode. It's like, so we're running in batch mode without, without uh, GUI effectively. So, um, but uh, this may be part of future work to, to enable this. Yeah, so I, I guess to expand on that is uh, you know, TechPlot 360 itself does not leverage the GPU for data computation, uh, but uh, TechPlot 360 itself and, and the engine which PyTechPlot is using uh, does rely on uh, OpenGL for rendering to the screen. Uh, and then when we render, uh, because PyTechPlot is uh, effectively just running in batch mode, uh, when you export your uh, images to, say, a JPEG or a PNG, uh, it's it's going to uh, use whatever capabilities are, are used by TechPlot 360. Uh, what data containers are data files imported as, such as arrays, data frames, or lists? Okay, so the data, when you load a data file using the PyTechPlot API, that data <coughs> gets owned by the tech, TechPlot 360 engine. And PyTechPlot really only has a handle to that data. Now, you uh, you can copy the data out into Python, and we have methods for going to uh, like Python arrays or to even NumPy arrays, and uh, and we also have methods to copy those you know Python native arrays back into TechPlot. Uh, but just loading the data and creating an image, or even doing some operation on the data. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that the data itself is out in the kind of the native Python formats, um, or you know even uh, there. I mean, it's, it's all accessible from Python, but in really in interest of speed, um, you know, on the data access, it's it's all controlled by the 360 engine. Okay. Uh, will PyTechPlot replace the TechPlot ADK? Uh, I guess I'll take that one. Uh, short answer is no. Uh, but the long answer is that uh, I, we're, we're working on uh, future developments of PyTechPlot, which should make it possible to uh, create uh, user interfaces with uh, PyQt uh, to control uh, the TechPlot 360 user interface. So uh, we, we hope to uh, have uh, that work 
at, at least a, a solid demonstration of that work, certainly by our next release of TechPlot 360. Uh, and the, the ADK will, uh, will always have uh, more capability than is available in, in PyTechPlot. Uh, but uh, we hope that more and more people will start using PyTechPlot for, uh, for doing some interesting uh, uh, automation and uh, additional user interface uh, controls. Uh, do you have a list of what capabilities you are planning to include in PyTechPlot in the near future? Uh, not a, uh, I, I don't have a list that I can uh, show you today, although uh, as John uh, mentioned, uh, we do have some additional APIs uh, that we have planned, uh, such as value blanking and uh, frame linking. Uh, those are APIs that we don't have uh, implemented today, although you can always resort to the macro language calls for those. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, in a future release, we do plan to allow the ability to control TechPlot 360, uh, the, the user interface, from a Python script, which is not possible today. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, are you able to change the underlying data of the chart and have it update without clearing the entire chart first? Uh, I'm thinking of matplotlib's functionality, where you can create an artist. Uh, on an axis object and then change its values with uh, set X data and set Y data. Uh, okay, well I guess this goes along with the fact that we don't have access to the rendering canvas or the rendered, can, you know, through like OpenGL or something like this uh, um, from PyTechBot. It is running in batch mode, so there is no screen to really update. There's, um, the, the artist is effectively software, you know, it's, um, so, uh, we do, in a sense, have this capability, right, to change the data and update the plot and, you know, blit it in such a way that it's only only the part of the plot that's changed is um, updated, and that's that's definitely there. Um, but uh, for really the kind of interactive functionality that this question implies, we don't quite have that feature yet. Yeah, and I, I think I think the answer will be yes uh, when we uh, in in a in our future release. Uh, you can, of course, uh, back to earlier examples, you could load a data set and set up all the plot style and export it to a PNG and then from there simply alter the X and Y data and then export again. So you don't have to reset all of the style, you can just update the data. Uh, so uh, I, I think the short answer is yes, but uh, maybe not quite uh, the way that you're implying, but uh, we can certainly uh, get back to you and, and uh, clarify on that if you have further questions. Uh, okay, good question here. Can I, how can I load the TechPlot GUI from PyTechPlot? Uh, I'll, I'll take this one, John. Uh, again, PyTechPlot uses the TechPlot 360 engine. Currently, uh, there is no way to launch TechPlot 360 from uh, the uh, current state of PyTechPlot. Uh, in our uh, future uh, future release, uh, it will be possible to launch TechPlot 360 first and then have PyTechPlot change the state of 360 itself. Uh, but uh, I, we, we don't have current plans for going the other way around where you start from PyTechPlot and then launch the 360 user interface. Uh, how do I pass variables from PyTechPlot to MCR commands when executing execute the execute command function? Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, this is kind of interesting. So the the TechPlot macro language is uh, one based and it's all done with strings. So effectively, oh, and I, and I guess I'll also say the PyTechPlot API is all zero based. And so typically, when you have, um, you know, and it's also, well, I guess I'll say the macro language is also based on indexes. You can't do you know, like as a, um, one of the questions earlier, you can't use names, for example, to specify a zone. You have to use the index. So uh, typically what you would have to do is get the index of the zone. We do have this, the zones in PyTechBot do have an attribute index. But of course it's zero based. So you'll have to add one and you'll have to convert it to a string and put it into the macro command as a string that you pass to execute command. That's, uh, that's pretty straightforward. We do have a lot of examples uh, that uh, with the, along with the PyTechPlot source. So, um, 
and so we can direct you to that. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we're uh, we're out of time here today. We have a number of other questions, uh, and we will answer these. Uh, and the answers to the uh, to the additional questions will be posted on uh, techblock.com along with the recording of this webinar. So, if you asked a question and it did not get answered, uh, fear not. We will answer the question, uh, and it will be available on our website. So, uh, with that, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, you can watch uh, any recorded webinar at techblock.com slash webinars. Uh, you can learn more about PyTechPlot at techblock.com slash PyTechPlot. And uh, as we said before, please do contact us at support at techblock.com if you uh, need any help with uh, Python API or uh, any additional uh, uh, issues that you have with TechBlock 360. We're always here to help. Thank you very much.